I was born in Worcester, Massachusetts, 1944. I was 10 pounds, 10 ounces. Uh, I was the last of five, and uh, my closest sibling was 11 years older than me. Uh, pretty much a working stiff operation. My father, when I was born, was 50 years old. My mother was 43. My mother was so old, she didn't believe that she was pregnant. She thought, she was working to the doctor, why am I gaining all this weight? And it was little me. It was a very disappointing way of seeing me. The manly way. Ah, to face the day, ah, uh, the champ, I hate my gators. One pill to make you happy. <laughs> what is that pill? That's a, I have to get the cholesterol down. This one's the pain, I call the pain in the ass pill because I have to take one and a half in the morning to keep my heart from going too crazy. That's the half. Now I gotta put the one. See, it's a pain in the ass. Okay. Now what else we got? I haven't got a vitamin. And that's for this round, ladies and gentlemen. Three shots. Mm -hmm. Safe at all bases, that is the morning run. What else do I need? My father, throughout his life, he, he worked in shipyards and he worked uh, in lumber yards, basically loading trucks. And he was a night watchman on Saturday nights. I used to once in a while go down and spend the night with him down there, and that was great. You know, we'd have little sandwiches and he'd cook salt pork on, in, in the burner, the, the furnace. And, Get to take the flashlight and walk around the whole company, and yeah, that was that was one of the cherished moments with my father. But he was a sixth grade education guy, and basically uh, pretty primitive in his uh, outlook towards life. What are you doing? What are you ordering? Lumpies up there? <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep it up! I might get a little tonight. <laughs> She might get a little. <laughs> I was the mama's boy. She was my love source. She'd stay up late. My father would always go to bed. So once my father went to bed by nine o'clock, her and I would get along great. Even when he was when he was a night watchman, we'd walk down and get Tom Collins mix and chips and everything at the package store and come back and listen to the radio. But I didn't realize that she bought herself a little bottle of gin, but I never found that out till I was probably 30. <laughs> she was actually having drinks on Saturday night, and her and I would sit there, and I'd have a, oh, I love Tom Collins mix, and I just have the mix, and that chips, and me and my mom are having Tom Collins mix and chips, and we're listening to the creaking door. We didn't have a, a TV. We would listen to the dramas on, on radio, and it was one, when I think of that, it was wonderful. I'm riding around in my car. Running on the radio I'm thinking I could really go For listening to some blues I'm really driving much too slow Looking for a blues to show You've gone but not forgotten Help 
I hope so. Can I get uh, scrambled eggs and two sides of bacon? 417, thank you, sir. Thank you. Aren't they nice? They're so nice. Sometimes they say, well, you're two minutes late for breakfast. Hello? <laughs> You're not used to be coming this late for breakfast. What time does breakfast? Oh, it's my buddy over there. Yeah, what time does the what time's the breakfast stop here? 10:30 on the weekdays. Oh, so it's 10:32. I just made it in. The last hen was lucky. clucking. But these, this is all protein. The eggs. So is the bacon. There's not a carb there. Not a carb to be found. So theoretically. I could eat a pile of these, but now I'm somewhere under 350. I should be somewhere under 250. The more under 250, the better for me to live and have a quality of life. Like right now, I can't do anything, but I have no strength, really. I have the strength to lift up this tiny piece of bacon. But, uh, yeah, my diet essentially is, you might call it the Atkins diet, but it's not. It's uh, uh, My doctor said, you know, Ed, protein and fat, that's what you need. <laughs> protein and fat, right here. Uh, notice I'm wolfing this. I don't normally eat this fast, but I can. I'm trained. I'm a trained professional. I can wolf. I can eat like no one else. Six, six foot five, 205 pounds, a stunning specimen. I'd runner's legs, I had them stubby, I had muscular runner's legs. I was, I was fine. I was fine, fine, fine. What's it say? One of you get off? Not good enough. That's not good enough. 315, that's not it. I, I weigh a lot more than that. I know that. Where else can we go? Get, where can I get weighed? Hello? Silly wabbit. Reality show? Huh? Reality yeah, I'm trying to get weighed, but there's nothing, no scale that'll weigh me. Oh. Where's that? On the second floor. Is that is it scale out of the wall? There like might be. 108 pounds? It might be. Is it a laundry room? Yeah. They might have Alright, zoom in on that thing, babe, because here we go. Three sixty-nine. Oh my god. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slash my wrist. Oh man. Three so I call it an even three seventy would be a nice way to do it. Of course. Take a dump. 
concentrate in water all day. Take your clothes off. Probably more like 365, but still, I don't care how you look at it. Long, long road. And if I lose 100 pounds, I'm 270, which is still a giant among men. <laughs> I just cut my leg off. That would, that would do it for about 40 or 50 pounds. Ed, you lost weight, yeah. About 70 pounds this morning. With a sawzall. Some kid had taken me and taken the change. Give me the change. This kid took took the, the change, and there wasn't much of it. And he and he hit me, you know. And, and it was like a hundred feet or hundred and fifty feet from the store to our front door. So I went running home. And I rang the bell and I bang and I was crying and I was oh and my mother come out and and this kid. He had a lot of gear, man. This guy was he had a wheelbarrow full of balls for a little kid. And he was at the foot of the stairs, just looking up at my mother. And my mother looked down at him, and she looked at me, and she says, You go down there, and you beat him up. You go down there and beat him up right now. <laughs> you go down and beat him up. Well, or else, I'll tell your father, and he'll beat you up. So I went gloriously into battle, and who knows? I was crying through the whole thing, but I was flailing, and so this and the kid ran away. And, uh, so it was like, as early as I can remember, the first stand up for your rights, no matter what, whether you win or lose. for food was the thing in Vietnam 
for me, underlying all things. Survival, but the quest for food. So, me and this guy, we got an apartment. And so, with that, we had a refrigerator. And we had contacts that would love to come and spend a night or two, because you have to be back on base by 11. So we had one guy in supply. Oh, so he supplied us. We had a thing this long of cheese, ham, and bologna. And he stole from the supply outfit. And we had other guys that had a way in with beer. So we'd have like 12 cases of beer. And, you know, this thing, I mean, it must have been 20 pounds of bologna, 20 pounds, and an endless supply. So we, so guys could come down, drink, and want, you want a sandwich? Yeah, you know. And then we'd, we'd buy all kinds of canned beans and tuna fish. So we had our little stash, and there we were. But then, that wasn't enough. That was enough. That's the emergency. Let's fall back on the bologna sandwiches. And when I'm really uptight or if there's a, an attack, you know, oh, there's a, you hear bombs going off up two blocks away, let's have a sandwich. The other guys are reaching for the whiskey. I'm going, ha <laughs> <laughs>
the sun going down, this light. He came out like a whale. Like you see that, that watch over whale that jumps out. It was like, whoa, he merged. I don't know, he must have gone 90 feet underwater. It was just, you know, and all the kids said, boy, your dad can swim. That was a poignant moment in my life. I was like one of the very few times that this violent, primitive man demonstrated that, you know, tried to be a dad, take the kids swimming. <laughs>
when I'm in the shrink, it covers a lot of uh, things. It's like it's an hour, but you talk about things like what did you do yesterday? What did you you know? And you you kind of work around things, and and eventually things emerge. It's all simple. It's all simple. It makes total sense. And being depressed makes no sense. But it happens. You know, one day you're up, one day then you feel like you're making progress, you know, and then it comes over you for no reason. You, you can be perfect, go to bed, feel good, wake up in the morning, feel crappy. trying to understand why I don't exercise, why I don't do the things, even though I made a plan a week ago to do some exercise, go walk, I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna get walk. I didn't take one walk in a week, not one, even though my goal was to leaving that drink a week ago and say, I'm gonna walk. So I say that this week. It's been two days I haven't walked. Also, because I have so many things to do, I don't do anything. That's another classic sign of depression. And it's tiring. It, it, the, the clock never moves, and you go through the night. And people like it, you know. I try. I, I can put up a face, and I can. And I never try to play bad. And you know, but it, it's not like I play music and I feel less depressed. Well, I do while I'm playing it. So that's, so that's the struggle. That's the struggle. It's like, and so you wonder if you're not eating properly, if you're not exercising properly, if you're not taking care of your, your health, is it because, is it that battle of, well, don't take care of your health, don't take care of your food, don't do your exercise, don't maintain a healthy attack on life, because what's the use? Because these other things will never materialize. So therefore... Have the bologna sandwich. Don't take that walk. So that's the battle. That's the battle I fight every day. Well, we made $125 off the bar and about $30 in tips. Where are we? We're here. But it's not the money, it's the music. Tonight I enjoyed making the music. You know, and if you can walk with $50 and fucking the drummer is great. Yeah. Huh? The drummer yeah, was great. Right. Except for the drummer. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But always you have three or four spots where you just let me go. South I lose my mind, man. This interview is really going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Down the shaft. Down the oh. shaft. <laughs> oh. Hey, can we grab the stuff at home? Yeah, grab the stuff. Grab the stuff, I'll go get the van. The night is over. A golden dream. Summer highway make the scene and then move along. Life is easy, 
You got no heartaches, do you? Just silken nights and ruffled morns and these highway friendships. You're passing time and miles and miles and miles and laughing all the while. And when drops of love fall, miss roadside showers keep you, you're hitting hard. And your open mind Touch a stranger Then move faster Feel her soul And then you stand alone Even flowers Growing in the pasture They, they smile a while Before they move on 